Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the uh, Board of Selectmen meeting for Wednesday, August 16th. Uh, Mr. Pinio, do we have a need for non-public this evening? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. We do under uh, RSA 91A, Roman numeral, or number three, Roman numeral two, D, real estate. Thank you. <coughs> Next on the agenda is consideration of minutes for August 2nd. I'd like to make a motion that we table these minutes because I didn't have a copy of them in my packet, and I think some of the rest of you didn't either. I'll second that. Motion to table in, in a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Public hearings. Our first one. We'll for Board of Select will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 16th, 2023 at 635 at the Wolfboro Town Hall Great Room at uh, 84 South Main Street in Wolfboro, New Hampshire, per RSA Chapter 31, Section 95-B, to consider accepting the unanticipated funds from an LCHIP grant in the amount of $37,500 to be deposited into the Conservation Fund for the purchase of tax maps 37-7 and 37-8. Hi, good evening. Um, this is Lenore Clark, the chair of the Wolfboro Conservation Commission. Um, I believe this is now the fourth public hearing we've had relevant, uh, relevant to this project, which began back in the COVID era of 2020, but for the benefit of the public that hasn't been paying attention to all four public hearings, um, the, per the reason behind this project is to acquire a couple of parcels of land um, totaling almost nine acres up in North Wolfboro. It provides permanent parking lot and trailhead access to our Whiteface hiking trail. The property has already been acquired. It was purchased um, with the blessing of the Board of Selectmen back in January of 2021. And um, we agreed, the Conservation Commission agreed to pursue the purchase of the property with the agreement that we would purchase, or excuse me, pursue um, private fundraising either through uh, donors or grants. <coughs> and we were successful in acquiring an LCHIP grant in the amount of $37,500. So we are here to have a public hearing to accept the unanticipated funds, which will fund approximately a third of the total project. Um, another third has been funded by the land bank of Wolfboro, Tuftonboro, and then the final third funded by ourselves. All right, thank you. Uh, I'll open up the public hearing. Does anybody in the audience have any questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Board members, I'd entertain a motion to accept this. <clears throat> I'll make a motion that we that we accept the uh, El Chip grant, the amount of thirty-seven thousand five hundred, to be deposited into the conservation fund, purchase of tax maps thirty-seven seven, thirty-seven eight. Second. Motion by Dave, seconded by Luke. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Thank you. Next uh, public hearing. Will for Board of Selectmen hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 16th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. in the Great Hall, uh, Wolfboro Town Hall, for the acceptance of unanticipated funds less than $10,000 in accordance with RSA 31 colon 95-B3 relative to a donation from WETCO in the amount of $833.34 to be designated for the work of the Wolfboro Energy Committee. Do we have somebody here to speak to this? I do not see Nancy online. Do you want me to speak on it? Sure. Um, so uh, what it is is the Energy Committee had some events and they received donations at these events and the donations went into an account um, with WEDCO and now WEDCO is cleaning up some of their um, smaller accounts so they want to um, have it transferred into the Energy Committee for use for future projects and anything the Energy Committee needs. Okay. Thank you, Brian. I'll uh, open up the public hearing if anybody in the audience has <coughs> any questions or comments on this, this grant um, donation. Seeing so, you know, that, I'll close the public hearing. Board members, any questions, comments? Yeah, I have a question. Is it going into a donation account? Okay. That's what's Thank you. 
Any others? I'd entertain a motion to, to accept this donation. Motion to accept uh, unanticipated funds less than $10,000 in accordance with RSA 31-95-B3 relative to a donation from WEDCO in the amount of $833.34 to be designated for work of the Wolfboro Energy Committee. Second. Motion by Luke, seconded by Brian to accept. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Let's see. Next, we have uh, temporary event permits. Wolf Board Board of Selectmen hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 16th at approximately 6.30 to consider a temporary event permit for the Wolfboro Area Chamber of Commerce to host Wolfboro's Summer Street Fair and annual sidewalk sale days. This event is located at various locations in downtown, including Kate Park and Foss Field from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. on August 25th through the 27th of 2023. Hi. Hi, Mary. Mary DeVries, on behalf of the Wolfboro Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we're, I'm sorry, I'm looking down at the <laughs> mic. Uh, so we're looking forward to this as a new, um, new in our list of annual community events. And it does incorporate what traditionally on this weekend has been our sidewalk sale days. So sidewalk sale days are, is one of the activities in the event. And then we have um, in included in the marketing of Wolfboro Summer Street Fair activities and events, concerts that other organizations had planned over that August 25, 26, and 27 weekend. And so just creating a, a larger opportunity uh, for to draw people into the community and that includes that means our residents as well as visitors. Um, so maybe they'll spend a little more time being here in our local community during that three-day uh, weekend. So we do have lots of yard games going on. Uh, if I could, Mr. Chairman, pass this Certainly. to the board. Thank you. So that is a not to scale <laughs> poster, uh, so, but it does give you an idea of the activities that are planned for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That Saturday in the evening, we are asking uh, you to consider letting us use just a sh short portion of Railroad Avenue to expand the events, kind of spread them out a little bit. It will not interfere with um, people being able to access around uh, Central Ave and back to the Glendon Street parking lot into Depot Street and uh, around to Central Ave. Okay. Both ways. All right. Thank you. So I'll open up the, uh, the any public comment on this, the public hearing part of it. Anybody have any questions or comments on this uh, this event? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Board members. Linda. Yeah, I have a couple questions. I'm assuming you're going to ask us to shut down the parking spaces on the um, back bay side of Railroad Avenue? Yes, that okay. one section. That yes. one section. Um, and do you have a time when you want us to shut that down? So it's a, you know, because people will be parking there and at some point we're going to need to have a time you'd like us to shut them down. Yep. So. Uh, we would like the activities to be set up and ready to go for 6 o'clock, so we don't need a lot of time to do that, so maybe 5.30. Um, if it's 6 o'clock, we can make 6 o'clock work. We didn't want to ask for any earlier than that time frame because um, I, I happen to work in that area. Okay. <laughs> and just observing over the years, um, we feel like that will have the least impact on people trying to park in that area. and by closing it off will create a safe environment for those family games. Okay. And, and we have uh, volunteers for the Chamber of Commerce who are have committed to being there to help with that close down in any way that is appropriate. And so in terms of, if I, if I understand it, we've got a lot going on. We're gonna have a movie in the park. Yes. You're gonna run this. We're gonna have the community bandstand going. And I'm wondering whether we should look at some signage on 
helping people know where to go to park, and it would be nice if the chamber could help with that because it's going to be a lot of activity. So I found when we closed down uh, Dockside, people needed help finding where to go to park. We absolutely will do that. We have prepared already the, um, we have the yard sign stakes so we can uh, plug those in with the proper signage in those lo different locations. Yes. Thank and you. And we'll have people, people power too. <laughs> okay, thank you. Brian. What if there are cars in the location that you want to close down, park there when you're trying to close down and make room for those activities to start happening? Yeah, I again, so this is the first time for this event, so we'll have this year to look back on and reflect how that works. We have discussed this in our team meetings, and we, you know, we're a car or two or even three, we don't see that that would have You any, can work around it. We can work around it, absolutely. Okay. And then, of course, if the people want to leave and they come in, we can work around that. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Seeing none, I'd entertain a motion. I'll move uh, to issue a temporary event permit for the Wolfboro Chamber of Commerce to host Wolfboro Summer Street Fair and annual sidewalk sale days. This event is located in various locations in the downtown, including Kate Park, Foss Field, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. on August 25th through 20. 7th, 2023, permit 2023-56. Second. Motion by Linda, seconded by Luke. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Let's see. The next temporary event is the Wolfboro Board of Selectmen to hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 16th at approximately 6.30. Uh, to consider a temporary event permit for the Wolfboro Parks and Recreation Department to host a movie in the park on August 26th, 2023, from dusk till 11 p.m. in the soccer field at, at Foss Field, permit number 2023-57. Isn't that covered in this one? No, this is comes through Park and Rec. We have an application from it. This is putting out by... The Park and Rec Department is in conjunction, but it's not putting out by the chamber. Yep. Okay. Because it's listed on here. Yeah. So this is a, uh, um, basically a movies, movies in the Park mm -hmm. program in Foss Field. It's, she's, uh, Christine's done this annually for quite a while now. Um, she is having one here going along with the same weekend as the previous event we just talked about so I'll uh, I'll open up a public hearing if anybody in the audience has any questions or comments seeing that we'll close a public hearing have board members any questions comments or concerns make a motion for a temporary event permit for Wolfboro Parks and Recreation Department to host a movie in the park on August 26 2023 from dusk to 11 p.m. in the soccer field of Foss Field, permit number 2023-57. Second. Motion by Luke, seconded by Brian. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Let's see, the next temporary event, the Wolfboro Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 16th at approximately 6.30. Uh, to consider a temporary event permit for the Kingswood High School cross-country team to host a cross-country meet at Abenaki on October 12th, 2023, from 2.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m., uh, permit number 2023-58. Good evening. I'm Dan Place, the high school cross-country coach. And I'm Sarah Christian, the middle school coach. And we've, we are requesting permission to host our one meet a year um, for both the high school and middle school on the Abenaki trails. Um, we've used these trails in the past, um, and then when COVID, it kind of went away. Um, the Kingswood High School complex is not ideal to host a race. There is traffic involved and um, other sports going on that we have to interrupt. So um, the trails at Abenaki are perfect for what we look to do. Um, we'd also um, like to um, have a training session or two over there. We've done that in the past. Um, just so our kids are familiar with the course. Um, and I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Well, this time I'll open up the public hearing. Anybody in the audience have any questions or comments would like to speak? Could you come up to the mic, please? And you know. Is this a multiple school event? Yes. There's typically uh, our school and two, maybe three others. Just for the record, that was Bob Lohman that came up to speak, so <laughs> we got you covered. <laughs> Any other questions or comments from the uh, from the audience? Seeing now, close the public hearing. Uh, board members. I, I you, <clears throat> yeah, you were me, Linda. Linda. We we need um, an insurance um, policy. Um, we don't have that at this time, and it said um, you need to contact the police department so they can find out whether you need any traffic help and or any security during it. And as far as any practice. It, it's public land, and I don't see any problem. The, okay. the event, I think you do, but for just to practice, yeah. I Our don't AD have it. mentioned uh, insurance, Aaron House, so I, I can get in contact with him and have him okay. send you that. Those are the two I have. Brad? Yes. Um, also, we are going to be placing signage up there um, recommending that people stay 100 feet away from the spray field area that's up there that sprays the town effluent. So in constructing the race you best, best you can, you're probably going to need to stay 100 feet away from the spray areas. Okay. I have a map of the Yeah, course. it doesn't look like they're up that way. It looks like the year on the cross-country ski trails. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those cross-country ski trails don't go up by our... Correct. Okay, so. just, just to make sure, okay. you know, make yeah. sure you try and keep people and, you know, other schools might be... People might go for, like, just quick warm-up runs and mm -hmm. things like that. Okay. So we just have to make sure we stay 100 feet away from those. Great. Any other questions or comments from the board? I'd entertain a motion. Move to approve a temporary event permit for Kingswood High School cross country team to host a cross country meet at Abenaki on October 12th, 2023, from 2:30 p.m. to 6:30 p.m. Permit number 2023-58. That's also pending. We get an insurance certificate, and also they check with the police department on whether they need uh, any second. traffic enforcement. I'll second that. Motion by Luke, seconded by Linda. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Next temporary event is an amendment to a permit. <clears throat> the Board of Select will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, August 16th at approximately 6.30 to amend a temporary event permit for the Lakes Region Pickleball Tournament on September 14th through the 17th of 2023 at Foss Field to include food trucks and the basketball courts were not listed on the original permit from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, permit number is 2023-1. Is Good evening, I'm Joe Santoro with the New Hampshire Lake Region Pickleball Club. Yes, we have decided to amend the permit, if we, with your permission, to allow for food trucks during hours of pickleball play. We now anticipate around 600 people will be there that weekend. That'll put too much, too much of a strain on local establishments. So by having two, two uh, food trucks there at a place designated by Wolfboro Parks and Recreation, we hope to make it more comfortable for our players. Okay. I'll open up the uh, public hearing to the public here. If anybody has any comments or questions, Mary? Thank you. Uh, very much in favor of the event. Uh, I, the Chamber of Commerce is willing and available to communicate to the local restaurants in anticipation of an increased uh, need for staff and services on that day. Be glad to work with the organizers of the event on that. Uh, it's a time of year where uh, they may appreciate that uh, larger capacity at the restaurants. But just wanted to say we are available to help with any communications on that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the public? Close the public hearing. Board members? Yeah, it looks like 
uh, we also have to update the application to make sure that the basketball uh, courts are included, which wasn't in the original permit, but you're going to use the basketball courts for? Uh, yes, and the basketball okay. court was in the original permit. I don't uh, know what happened there, but when I made the presentation back in October, we included the basketball courts. Well, what we got was that it was not included, and we'll just make it part of our motion to make sure okay. there's no problem. How about uh, that? That's fine, then. Okay. And I believe you've also thought I saw somewhere in here that you've kind of worked out the location for the food trucks to be. Christine, be yeah, wants it somewhere near the pavilion, pavilion but yep. off the grass accordingly. And we're going to have these, make sure these trucks bring their own generators so we don't use uh, town facilities. Yep. I would, um, in the future, it would be nice if you possibly could use, and I'm okay with um, the, the trucks from Ossipi, but we have um, a couple of vendors that are right in Wolfboro that own food trucks. And if they're available, um, I, I would like to see it kind of stay in the community if possible. I agree with you, Brian. Uh, Joyce Lake monitored this process. She looked at some 18 vendors, and the ones she came up with were the only ones who were free of those dates. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Pinello. Uh Mr. Chairman, I would just be curious as to uh, who's responsible for the trash related to the food trucks and uh, relocating it to a uh, final disposal site. We expect the food trucks to cover their own problems. And if there's anything left behind, Jim, we will take care of it. Thank you. Okay, yep. As long as you can communicate that with the food trucks, that would be great, Joe. Yeah. Any other questions, comments, or motion? Yeah, I'll move to amend permit 2023-1 to add food trucks and to update that the basketball courts are also approved and that they will address trash. Do I have a second? Second. Motion by Linda, seconded by Luke. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, next on our agenda is a bulk vote, which includes the weekly manifests. Um, August 4th of $3,132,461. August 10th of $160,284. And August 11th, $184,211. Uh, it's a property tax refund abatement applications. That are, there's denials on those. Um, intent to cut, uh, cut wood and property tax credit exemptions are included. So, I'll make a motion that we approve bulk vote A through D. I'll second. Motion by Dave, seconded by Linda to approve the bulk vote, items A through D. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next, we have no board committee or appointments under new business. The our budget, uh, the July budget, actual versus uh, the, the budget. Seems like I was just here, but <clears throat> uh, Catherine Carpentier, Finance Director. Um, I will give you a quick overview of July 2023 um, actual versus budget report. As of July 31st, the general fund operating budget is at 64%, which is a little slightly higher than the seven month average of 58%. Um, percent. <clears throat> the revenues for the general fund are at 71, which is also um, a little higher than the 58%. Uh, motor vehicles continue to come in strong and um, we've got half of the taxes booked. Uh, for water fund uh, operating budgets at 69 percent, electric it is at 64, sewer is at 89, pop whaling is at 88. The revenues for water are at 80 percent, but 56 percent is um, what the residents are using. Electric is at 59 percent, sewer is at 77 percent, and the residents are at 50 percent, and pop whaling is at 41 percent. Uh, we're doing pretty well on gas. We're only at about 45% expended, but diesel, we're at 72%. Uh, legal, we're about 40%, and overtime, we're about 78%. 
Uh, some of those were caused by the first half of uh, the first three months of the year when we had a lot of snow. Uh, then things settled down, and then we had some storms in July. Um, we have, the town manager and I have met with uh, the public works director. Uh, he probably will need some money being transferred from other areas of the budget to cover um, some of his consumables, fixing the roads. Uh, he really wants to get all the roads fixed before plowing season starts. So we will be um, giving our recommendation to the board once we identify money on that. Um, and we're also meeting with the Pop Whalen uh, team um, because they are um, targeting to be overexpended. Um, I've mentioned a few months uh, the compressor had an emergency repair of almost 40000 uh, and we had some soft costs that were picked up by the Pop Whalen. Um, other than that, um, we're status quo at this point. Um, I guess I also should mention out loud uh, that the audit report has not been delivered. Uh, a draft report has not even been delivered to me at this point. Um, the auditors are taking responsibility for that. They got behind this summer and just can't catch up. So um, I, I don't have an idea of when I'll be getting it, but I am asking them frequently. So it's okay. unfortunate. So, do you have Question. any questions for me? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Casey. Okay, next on our agenda, commercial vessel landing permit for the Sandy. We have somebody here from, from that group. Don't see anybody. See nobody online either, Brad? Nobody online either, okay. Um, for the public, what this is, is the, uh, the YMCA camp of Greater Boston has a boat called the Big Sandy 2, which comes into town about 10 times a, during the summertime, about, yeah, was it yeah, once yes. a week, I believe? And they bring the kids in, they come in, get ice cream, stuff like that, and head back out to the camp. So um, they weren't aware that we had a, they used to just come in, park at the dock, it was not a problem, just now it's so busy down there. Um, they found out that we have a, uh, a permit process for commercial landing permits. Uh, they put an application in for to be able to come in here and do it uh, do it that way. So, board members, do we have any? We have a insurance certificate from them, and they don't need a sign for anything because they're not giving rides out at all. Um, Move to issue the Sandy a commercial vessel permit for 2023. Second. Motion by Brian, seconded by Dave. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Now we have an appointment here from David Shea regarding a mass landing marine patrol boat parking area there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for letting me speak tonight. The topic of, of marine safety in our local lakes. I live at 17 King Pine Road, also known as King Pine Lodge on Crescent Lake. I've lived there since 2003 when my wife and I purchased the cabin. I've been in, on, or around Winnie, Wentworth, and Crescent since 1969, after getting out of the service. In 2022, I wrote to the town manager and the chief of police about a serious safety issue on Crescent and Wentworth Lakes. The number of times we've seen the Marine Patrol on the lake has dramatically reduced over the past few years. I've shared with the town officials a letter I received from the Marine Patrol agent for this area. His main response as to the lack of patrol was his inability to find a parking spot at Mass Landing. Due to the reduction in staff and Marine Patrol agents, he is now required to travel and patrol multiple lakes in the area. His issue is simple. When he arrives at Mass Landing, after he tries to launch his craft, there is no spot for him to park his truck and trailer. He's had to wait up to multiple hours for parking to become available. 
I suggested back in 2022 in a letter I wrote to the town that the town want one spot as official use only, marine and official use only. While the town cannot address the issue of marine patrol staffing, they can make it easier for the marine patrol to do their job when they come to the lake. If on any day you stop at Mass Landing, you will find multiple cars in the upper parking area for more than a few days. I believe some of those cars are island owners. I also feel some of those spots are being used by local homeowners, thereby reducing the parking spots for day users. On the lower level, there are clearly marked trailer spots that are often, often filled with just SUV and other vehicles without trailers. I wonder if the spots were open in the upper level, would they not be forced to use the trailer-only spots? Since there appears to be no enforcement of the trailer-only rule, the next reasonable solution to the Marine tr Patrol parking is to grant one spot for their use. While police and law enforcement presence alone does not stop 100% of the lake issues, any activity by a patrol agent does help reduce the dangers on the lake. The owners of the lake property in Wentworth and Crescent deserve better service from the Marine, from the Marine Patrol. The town can help in this matter by simply marking one spot for their use. Respectfully, I request you respond to this request and grant the request that, that will improve the safety of all boaters and lake users. Thank you for your time. Hey, Any questions before I? Pardon? Any questions before I leave? Well, I'm sure we have some here. Um, I think I recall some correspondence going back and forth that um, we do have parking available at the parking lot down by Linda's Flowers, which is a very short walk up the Bridge Falls path to Mass Landing. And I thought I saw one email there that we had availability at the church just across the street um, um, to park a boat, or, you know, the vehicle and the trailer there if needed or when they come to the lake in there. I don't know, if, has that been talked to you at all about or considered? Or? I saw the letter, but respectfully, sir, having a um, agent park his boat and leave the marine equipment, all the police equipment, unattended while he drives down the road and parks at Linda's Flower and walks back, I really don't think that's a great use of his time and secure of that police equipment. Um, I'm not sure why we're pushing back on one spot for a Marine Patrol that affects well over a couple of hundred people on the lake. I'm not sure what's the issue here. One spot missing isn't going to stop a major fishing tournament or anything else. So respectfully, I, I disagree with that response. Okay. And I'm struggling very hard to get Marine Patrol to address the fact that we've had no activity on the lake. And obviously, the other day we had a very tragic accident. And I don't know, you know, having Marine Patrol out there checking people for their licenses, for the, uh, slowing down the violations that we're having on the lake, and we have a lot of them. I just think we need more Marine Patrol. Would this be for Marine Patrol agents, or is this going to be for like the, I don't know if they still have the auxiliary patrol where it's like volunteers that come out and do this? I would recommend it says official use only, which means police, Marine, and EMT, and any other official use. Okay. All right. I believe we have, Mr. Davey would like to Sir, respond. How Good, how are you? Good, thank you. I'm Brendan Davey. Um, I have actually spoken with uh, a few of my officers about this. I'm Captain Brendan Davy, New Hampshire State Police, Field Area 1, and Marine Patrol, sir, uh, has the dubious distinction of being under my command. So um, I, I am privy to uh, some of the email chains going back and forth. Um, I've spoken with a couple of the, uh, with one of the officers who, whose response is material to your understanding of the staffing issue, and that is a real issue. Uh, and we're hiring part-time and seasonal Marine Patrol officers, so um, that is something that we're working hard to address. Coverage is, is indeed an issue as well. Um, I think if the, if the board would be willing to, to give me the opportunity to speak with you for a bit, um, that 
if we cannot find a suitable solution otherwise with our officers and get them out there, um, which again, coverage is, is the issue primarily. I don't believe that the parking problem in and of itself is the point of failure for attention out on that waterway. And yes, there was a tragic incident uh, two Sundays ago. Um, so I'm not sure, I'm not convinced that the parking issue is, is, the, is the crux um, of, of the matter out there. I think your, your argument is, uh, is well laid out if, if it were the case. I would ask for a little bit of time to speak to you and for the board to obviously entertain um, a citizen to come back and, and reopen the issue. Mm -hmm. If you'd be open to that. At one time, wasn't there someone who let them use their private launch? Yes, sir. In order. Is there, is that, is there a solution like that mm -hmm. available? Um, at your lodge, sir, do you have a, public, a private launch at your lodge? No, but that gentleman that used to allow that. Could you use a mic? River? Could you use a mic, please, so the TV can hear you? I'm sorry, to answer the question, uh, the gentleman that used to allow the Marine Patrol to park on Swift River there, yeah. um, he actually, I've been informed, and is still saying, yes, you can still park there. So, uh, but that would most likely leave a Marine Patrol boat there most of the time. And I have no, I have no problems uh, if you wish to table this and bring it back after the uh, lieutenant, yeah. did I say that right, captain, sorry. Captain and I, God, I'm gonna fail my military rules here. <laughs> um, the captain and I have a chance to talk. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think that'd be a good idea myself to let you two speak and yes, then come back to us with yep. a recommendation or okay. a request. Yep. Thank you for your time. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Need a motion? There's somebody, uh, uh, Brad. Oh, yes, come up, please. Here. Uh, thank you. My name is uh, Bob Spear, and I've been an island resident on Lake Wentworth since I was 10 months old, and uh, we totally enjoy it. We use Mass Landing as our departure for island use, uh, as well as it's the only launch available uh, for, the, for the Crescent Lake, Smith River, and, Mass, and uh, Lake Wentworth. You know, I'm as a former Marine Patrol officer, I can certainly say that the public safety is number one, okay? I'm not sure that uh, the, this, uh, this process or this uh, suggestion is the best one. Uh, mass landing is, has got a number of problems. Thanks to the town, we've done improved the parking, et cetera, et cetera, but at the same time, We've also expanded its use tremendously. Uh, as a matter of fact, thanks to uh, your Director of Public Works, Mr. Randall, I'm meeting with him on Friday morning to discuss mass landing and the various needs that we have. One of them is dock space. Another one is no one enforces the rules. <laughs> and so there's a number of issues that all tie together here. and. Uh, I think it uh, table, if you will, but I don't think this is, a, I think this is a very short term and uh, unne unnecessary decision at this point in time. I think there are better ideas. Where that boat was moored before, I've talked to that owner before, uh, uh, last year, and he thought the patrol boat at his dock was great. He uh, loved it. And then, of course, you have the vandalism issue at Mass Landing. So there are a lot of issues, and it needs to be thoroughly vetted. And believe me, this is not about, you know, curtailing public safety or not wanting an officer on the lake. It's, uh, in my personal view, having an officer on the lake for a half a day a week to patrol is not enough, anywhere near enough. And we need more patrol. And so to tie up a dock space on mass landing seven days a week, 24 hours a day for someone to use for a shift or half a, half a day, pending of course emergencies, which are very important. I get that. Um, we need to uh, think carefully about it. And we also need to look at the larger problems of mass landing and look at the totality of it. Uh, I talked with your previous director of public works about 
a plan for mass landing, and he was uh, supportive of that. We just never had the time to put that together or to present it to the board. So I'm saying to you as an Islander, knowing that the parking is extremely limited um, and uh, that the designating one spot for a marine patrol boat uh, doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. So if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them, but thank you for your time. Thank you. Anybody else uh, want to make any comments? All right, board members. I would like to make a motion to table um, this appointment and reschedule it when, um, after he has talked to Marine Patrol, and maybe we've also had some input from our public works director. Oh, second. second. Uh, a motion by Linda, seconded by Dave. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next on their agenda is an appointment for Peter Webster to, regarding the Hawkers and Peddlers location. Is he here with us tonight? Nope. Don't see him. Um, I think we'll just uh, to table that. Table. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Motion to table that uh, Hawkers and Peddlers location. Second. Motion by Luke, seconded by uh, Brian to table this one. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Next is the uh, Central Dispatch Capital Reserve Fund uh, request for $290,000 and $242. So uh, you may recall over the past several years we've been um, putting money into a capital reserve fund for the re ultimate replacement of the dispatch console. Um, this warrant article or this account was established in 2019 for the purpose of replacement of dispatch console and other related equipment and installation and other related expenses. Uh, currently the account has $325,124 and Captain Livy is here to speak on his behalf to get this project rolling along with the um, uh, mobilization of the public safety building renovation and expansion. Captain? Yeah, thanks. Um, as you know, the public safety building is going to be starting very soon. Um, we'd like to get this purchase, uh, the $290,242 um, dollars. This is for the purchase of the new console and the furniture. Uh, we're looking at a, a year for it to come to get, it, hopefully, into Wolfboro after <laughs> they build it, <laughs> once we make the order. So it could be longer, and we don't want to delay any... Um, uh, of the public safety uh, building. So, because they're gonna be doing the renovation of that phase three. Yep. So we wanna make sure it's on site prior to that. Yep. Sounds like a very reasonable approach to me. Board members, any questions or no. comments for the captain? No, isn't that why we had the Capital Reserve account for just exactly. today? Exactly. Would somebody like to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we Go ahead with the purchase of the console, MCC 7500, with the furniture costs, totaling $290,242.23. Second. Motion by Dave, seconded by Luke. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You are all set Thank to you. put the order in. Perfect. I got the next one, too. You got yourself a radio. Next on the agenda is uh, permission for the Wolfboro Police and Wolfboro Community TV to host Kofi and, uh, Kofi and Coffee and Connections at the Cape Park. Yeah, so we're just looking to change the venues. We try to move around. We try to get people to get on our show. So we do this monthly with the um, community television. So we're just looking to get out at Cape Park right now and while well, the weather's good and show off Wolfboro a little bit. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Where, that's where are you going to go when it gets cold? Uh, then we go back inside somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Adventure. Adventure around. Linda? Yeah, I just, we always uh, do this to anybody who uses Kate Park. It is a public space. People will be walking around. They'll be making noise. Yep. And you work around that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's easy. 
Yep. We're usually yep. inside a restaurant or something like that, so it's pretty noises common. Yep. <laughs> so. Would somebody like to make a motion? I'll move that we give give permission to the Wolfboro Police Department and the Community TV to host Coffee and Connections at Cape Park. Second. Motion by Linda, seconded by Brian. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Next on the agenda is a discussion regarding construction at Cape Park and at 33 South Main Street. Uh, so Justin from Four Corners is here to speak on behalf of this request. Uh, they are working on the uh, upper deck framing of the building at 33 South Main Street, which is also known as the Downtown Grill. Um, you've got some sketches here um, and a memo from uh, the code official outlining the requirements. And Justin's here to speak on behalf of what he's looking for to be able to bring this um, project closer to completion. Justin? Thanks for your time. Um, I met with uh, Jason, um, building inspector, and he directed me to the board with option to present some options for uh, ways to protect the public while we're doing the second story construction of that deck on the back of 33. Um, the two options I presented, one was a fenced area that could be removed every day uh, to keep people from walking within a certain perimeter of that deck based on the um, code requirements for public safety in, in the fall zone. Um, that first option with the um, fence doesn't really work great. It, it blocks that new sidewalk that was installed, the new stone dust sidewalk. I presented a second option, which was a, is a, um, uh, for the time of the construction, uh, while we're overhead, is a uh, planked uh, walk-through staging tunnel, similar to what you'd see if you're working in a city on a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. That's a safer of, way to approach this of the two. Um, people can still get inside a fence or around a fence, and it, it takes away the sidewalk access. Right. We would present to, uh, the plan presents to have a covered overhead pathway with, and we'd put some signage up that says walkway access to Cape Park and walkway access to the parking lot, from, depending on which side we're on. Yeah. Yeah, no, when I looked at these, I kind of preferred that, that method myself, doing the stage, the hard plank on top and, and uh, keeping it so it's in alignment with, a, with our entrance pathway into the park too and stuff. And did I read right too that it, you anticipate about a five to six day working working days time frame for this to to happen and yes. then you'd be taking it down and be done with that part of the project yes yep board members any other questions linda yeah i have a real problem granting this around march 15th we granted um uh, four corners construction permission to use the parking lot down at dockside until may 5th and um, they did not stop working on May 5th. Um, we did ask also for a landscaping plan, which I think you helped uh, get, but we did not, it, they went on into early part of May. We eventually had to remove a dumpster um, and the material um, to clean the area up. Um, we had, um, in July, we had construction material, dumpsters, and construction um, trucks constantly blocking the handicapped space, so the town had to move, remove the handicapped space in order to provide handicapped re residents with a space to park. Um, and uh, so now we have a new walkway closer to it, which is what he is, um, talking about we have constantly had problems with construction uh, trucks taking up parking spaces on the street and putting cones out and saving those parking spaces just for the construction st uh, staff. Um, and then we've had, there are issues, and it's not part of the construction exactly, 
But what really bothered me was is the trash issues that we're having down there in this area. Um, and I brought a bunch of pictures to, that people can look at. But the final straw for me was on Winnipesaukee Day. We were showcasing our town, and our walkway had trash in it. Now, this may not be you, but that is the people who own this building. And so I, have a, I don't know that if I give them permission for five to eight days, that that thing won't be there for two weeks. I would absolutely not be willing to give it all until after Labor Day. I think the public has looked at propane tanks, trash, um, had their walkway blocked, um, and I think that we should at least, if people agree to do it, that we have to make sure that it's after Labor Day and the last couple of weeks of summer that we have the downtown there looking as best we can. Um, I see it as a total lack of regard or respect for the residents of this town or our ordinances. I, I have a question. When? Just there's no when. So there's a couple of pictures and plans and instructions, but there's no when. When when were you expecting this, to do this? We can't move forward and we're on on it until we receive approval to do this, and then we have to get the permit in hand. We applied for it two months ago. So you've applied for the permit, and from, we're ready to do it we're, from our town. You've applied for a permit from our town two months mm -hmm. ago, and it hasn't been granted. For the yet. phase two, it hasn't been granted, and it's been hung up on this. And it's been hung up on this. So what is your expected? Say that, say that we approve this and your permit comes through in the next week or two, when were you expecting to do this? Immediately, as soon as we receive the permit. As soon as you receive it's been, I believe it's sitting waiting on this, according to Jason's office. Okay. Cool. Have, has anybody heard that? Okay. I yeah, haven't. it's the first time I've heard that. Me too. Jason's waiting for us to approve something, to issue a permit. Am I missing something here? So he will not issue the permit until um, there is a plan to deal with the walkway. And he's using our oh. land. He's using public space. That's why it's got to come to us. And we're the only one who can grant permission on public land. Correct. I, I don't, I personally would, would just soon see the scaffolding with the planks on it so people can get by. The when is the same question I had, Brian. Yeah. Is when is this going to be done? Um, I will agree with Linda that personally, I don't think it should be done or started till after Labor Day. And if we need a motion to that effect, I will make the motion that we approve this subject to them using the scaffolding with the planking and that it not be started till after Labor Day. And not during Columbus Day. Well, they'll, they should have it all framed and done yeah. in five to eight but if days. They, if, yeah, if they, if they get pushed up, I wouldn't want it done on Columbus Day weekend either. Yeah, but even if you compensate for some weather, five to eight days of work yeah. with the scaffolding up, I mean, if it goes into two weeks, it's still not going to get into yeah. October. So maybe we should, we should put a range that it needs to be done. What, what day is Labor Day? It uh, needs to be the 5th through the 14th would be eight, eight days. So Labor Day is the fifth. fifth no, fifth of Labor September. If we give them, if we give them the date of the uh, September fifth through September fourteenth is a time period yeah. that gives you your maximum eight days, which is what you wrote. And after eight days, it needs to come down. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind doing September sixth to September twentieth or something, and they can have it for eight days in that window. I think you know, we need to nail them down with the problems we had before. We had May 5th, and it was into <clears throat> May 12th, and we had to do it ourselves. So my feeling is we give them a set time that they have to do it in. I think that's one of the issues we're having down there. Now, we have to make sure that um, they get the permit in hand in time. Well, They've they got enough have the time permit between now and the 5th of September to get yeah. that. Come on. I'm sure whatever, if we do an approval of something tonight there, um, Justin will be in the next tomorrow morning to get the permit from Jason, and uh, they'd have details on what our motion is, so for the think, dates. So I don't have any problem with adding Linda's dates to my motion. Okay. If somebody wants to second that. If you want, we want to just restate the motion then, Dave, for us to refresh oh, us. Uh, 
I don't have any problem. I'll make a motion that we approve the access to the park with scaffolding and planking on the top and that we allow them the f dates that Linda. Fifth is a se September through the 14th of September. Okay. Uh, and the work not begin until after Labor Day. That would yeah, be the dates on, that you. Beginning on the fifth, right? Yep. yep. Do I have a second? Second. Motion by Dave, second by Brian. Now any discussion? Those dates work for you? Sounds like they have to. Okay. Yeah. This, um, I have one other thing if it's okay. It has to do with the, the two propane tanks that are in the way of where we have to build the footing under that deck. We need to just set them aside four feet so we can dig the footing and then put them back. And we have had some pushback in that request and not sure w where that lies. They, they block our way to do it. Where are you gonna put them? Are you gonna put them on town property? Right beside the two that are there that are already on town property. We, well, you have a lease for the four of them. Four of them. I don't. Yeah. Um, or license agreement. Well, the, oh, I'm, I'm assuming you're speaking for the owner of the building who has hired you. So that's what. Well, why don't we let's deal with this motion and do we have on the floor first do with just the construction dates for the uh, for the deck itself there that we can talk uh, about the propane tank separately. Any other discussion on the motion for the dates of September 5th through the September 14th? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay. Now we could talk about the, uh, the request to move the propane tanks for to put the footing in how long a time frame would you are you talking a couple days two days, two days. are they I going to be moved and still connected yes disconnected and moved they have to disconnect them move them and then reconnect them I had submitted a sketch on this we don't have quite it quite a while right. back okay and who will be doing the, the disconnect and the, and the reconnect? Eastern. Eastern propane. And where will the, it's the two that's, that are closer to the water. Correct. And where will they be putting them? Just four feet to the right? Uh, no, they would move them beside the other two. Behind the other two from, yeah. when you, from well, the you water? Well, you can't, there's a big lilac behind them. Yeah. So it would be adjacent. Just there, there's four in a line. Yep. Picture these two closest yep. to the lake setting to the side. Okay, beside so they'll be them. beside the other two. Correct. Then um, if, you, if you were to do that, would you put a caution fence around them or something? Yes. And you'll, you'll be two days only. That's it. We don't need to deal with that. So what we could do to address this is we could have another motion with the dates of being the 5th, maybe through the 7th, which gives them an extra day if there's weather there. It gives you, you know, two full days and into the next day to get it all back, cleaned up, and put back together. I don't know if the board the only, thinks along that line. Sorry to interrupt. The only issue with that is whether the gas company can accommodate that day. It would, the, whenever they could accommodate is yep. really when it would start the clock. Yeah. I would want them to be sitting out there for another week afterwards just because they can't get there. So um. yeah. so then why don't we do this? Why don't we take and um, if we do, we, we might have to amend our motion. We might have to approve this based on now that we're finding out when propane company can move the tanks because the tanks have to be moved first, then the scaffolding has to be set up, then the um, footings can be poured and the... Um, deck can be corrected. So if the propane company doesn't fall in their position, then everything else goes to heck in a handbasket and we're back in square one. So how can we figure out how to get this so that it works and it's only Ugh. eight days and it's all done? Hopefully. I think if we give them those, those dates to work within and they have to do it then. Yep. Um, and if they can't, then they have to come back. Yep. And, you know, that's what they do got come up with some different dates and you know redo this whole thing again but to leave it open-ended I think would be yeah. tough right now with everything yeah. we've had to deal with with this whole with everything going on down there and it's not necessarily you know it's not 
the whole Jason, Justin's fault here. It's, you know, some of it's we're having issues with See, my, the my owner, brain, so. My brain says this. Give him a, now let me finish before anybody jumps down my throat. Give him a three-week window. In that three-week window, they're only allowed eight days. They notify the town 48 hours in advance when the propane company can start their project. The clock starts at that time. They have eight days to get it done. End of story. That's the way I would do it, but give them a, a begin time no earlier than the 5th and a drop dead time of maybe the 21st, 22nd, something like that. So, but they're only allowed to have scaffolding up eight days, the tanks move for two days. So it's still all the same process, but it gives them eight days that fall in a window of time. That's the way I would do it so we can get the damn thing done. I think with this, personally, I think with this lead time now of where are we in August 16th here, so you get a little, you got over two weeks of lead time um, to get them, you know, everything lined up and stuff. I think that would be enough time to work with Eastern to say, I want to have you guys there on the 5th to disconnect and relocate the tanks and, and at the same time be back on the 8th to move them back in, in line where they're supposed to be and hooked up again, done deal. Um, that'd be that's, that's the way I would approach it myself, but I just don't know what their lead time is I don't think anybody here does right now knows what is I think no none of us know what Eastern's lead time is no, right now We have enough lead time so they can schedule that in I think they're they'd be flexible enough to do That's not a very big job for them to come down and relocate them and hook them back up They'd be in and out of there in an hour. I would imagine Do you see a problem with that. Do you think if you called them tomorrow they could do it? Um I can't speak for them. I've had longer lead times on more simple things with them, tank deliveries, tank removals. I think we gave them a time frame. If because of that they can't do it, then they can come back mm -hmm. to us with a new date that gives us the eight days. Is there another meeting between now and the 5th? No. Another selectman's meeting? Or is there a way to me to convey this, a, a time structure to Jim that gets to you folks for some sort of approval? So you do meet on the 30th? That's right, too, yeah. yeah. We have a meeting, right? So we will be getting together on the 30th on because another matter. If, if we had to, we could. We could amend the dates, but at this yeah. point, we would It gives me two weeks to put a schedule together for you guys, if that's fair. What was that now? That gives me two weeks to put a schedule together right. for you folks. Yep. Yep. And then present it. I don't know, will it require me to come back if I have a defined schedule or would I just be presenting a timeline? If you've got a defined schedule, I, I think we can, they can probably make a decision. So if we have this schedule and um, you can make, you meet it, you could just could let the town manager know that we're, we're on that schedule mm -hmm. that we, we approved. If not, then you can come back on the 30th with an amended schedule and we will have to reapprove. Fair. A revisit, rather. Why did I say reapprove? Yeah. Revisit. <laughs> Approve again. So, what does what does the board think about you know, giving them at least at this time frame, give them uh, you know the time window for the propane tanks, and if he ends up working it out with Eastern, they can fall within that. Then you don't have to come back for anything. You just inform the you know the town manager or Jason that you know we're in that time time window and. Would anybody want to entertain that as a for a motion? Uh, so moved. Yes, yeah, second. Motion by Brian, seconded by Luke, to allow a time frame from, I believe, it was, uh, September 5th through September 8th for the relocation and reinstallation of the propane oh, tanks. Four. Correct. Any other discussion? What is is it? Only difference from the last motion is that the propane tanks are included. This is this is strictly dealing with just the propane tanks separately, is on, on, on their own time frame within the window that uh, the, in the we window gave, we've already given. We've them. already given them okay. right. What about um while we're on it all? Um, what about the landscaping installation? Well, let's stay with this issue here. We haven't had a vote yet on this one. So, any other discussion regarding the relocation of the propane? Seeing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Opposed. 
four to one, okay. Brian. Landscaping, the fall, the spring. I don't, I'm not the owner, I don't know. I work under their direction. I provided a sketch. Yeah. The tanks are in the way of where that has, once we do the deck, I'm assuming that that work could be done. Okay. But it would be senseless to do it now without moving the tanks, doing the work, yeah. completing the deck, and then assembling the, a landscape. Yeah. That's why the, um, the people who tend Cape Park agreed with me that a, a fence would be a better option because during right, this- Right, we've already decided right, yeah. that. We're not through that, we're not on that road again. I, <laughs> so. yeah, I, I can't speak to that. Okay, so I think we've covered Sorry? You, I think we've covered everything you wanted to. Uh, other than there's been so many dates flying around, we have a three-day window for tanks, five to eight, and okay. then is the is that also the window from five to what's the date for construction? 14th. Five to 14. Yep. Okay. And I'll let you know if I fall have to fall out of that and reapply. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Take care. All right. Next uh, discussion, the ambulance proposal, Wolfboro Fire Department. Okay, uh, so I'm, I'm gonna go through some items for the board and the public. Um, uh, the chief, the deputy is here, um, along with some of the staff. Um, this is essentially going to be a uh, 50,000 foot view of the ex anticipated expenses for an ambulance operation um, and, and some, some choices that we've got to make uh, pretty soon so that we can move forward. Uh, our, our goal going forward will be um, on the September 6th meeting uh, to try to hold the public hearing for the purposes of discussing the capital reserve fund and whether or not those funds can be used for um, the purchase of a used ambulance uh, that came to us at a recommendation uh, from the town attorney based on the way that the warrant article was originally crafted and the position where we are in moving forward. He thinks we do have some flexibility on that. Um, from that point, uh, we're hopeful that same evening we will be able to give you a, uh, again, a, a, a 50000 foot view of what we're looking at for anticipated revenues for the ambulance uh, if we were to bring this in-house. Um, and then we're hopeful by the end of September, I think it's for the October 6 uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting to have the complete business plan put together uh, with a series of recommendations to you uh, for the budget process. So where we're at today is the, the town issued an RFP earlier this year uh, for ambulance services. We received two bids. Uh, those two bids contained multiple options for services for the town. The incumbent provider, uh, they did not bid on the contract uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, the current ambulance contract does expire December 31st, 2023. Uh, with Stewart's Ambulance, there is the option inside of that uh, agreement for an extension. Uh, Wolfboro Fire Rex Rescue is currently licensed as a non-transport EMS unit with the state of New Hampshire, and at this time they are not equipped with the abilities to transport patients. Uh, ambulance services, based on the, the uh, responses we received for the RFPs, uh, they varied uh, from 1.472 million all the way down to uh, 600,000 for the year 24 and then going up. Um, currently, under the 2023 contract, we're spending $275,953. So no matter what we do, um, come the 2024 operating budget, we're going to see a significant increase in ambulance service costs for the town of Wolfboro. Um, we, one of the reasons why uh, Stewart's Ambulance did not bid on the contract, uh, they do believe that the town of Wolfboro is in the best position to uh, provide uh, uh, 911 response services, ambulance services 
to the town. Uh, they looked at this in Laconia in 2018. At that time, there was a, a lot of contention about the contract and the ambulance service operated by the city of Laconia, and it came back that Laconia was the best way to operate it through their fire department, and they continue to do that today. So our current problem is uh, the ambulance service equivalent to the level that we're accustomed to in the town of Wolfboro today is extremely expensive. Um, uh, compared to what we're receiving today, uh, we're, we're going to go from that $270,000 to $1.4 million if we were going to offer a similar uh, service based on the RFPs provided. Um, the town currently is not in a great position to take on this uh, beginning in January of 2024 because of the public safety building construction, equipment, funding, and funding boils down to staffing. Uh, that's going to have to go in front of the voters. Uh, the current contract that we have uh, has paramedic level services within it. Um, the, the chief and I have been having conversations. Um, we need to have a conversation with the hospital regarding their paramedic level intercept service so that we can hopefully uh, operate at the advanced EMT level, uh, which is lesser than the paramedic. Paramedic is uh, in excess of 1,400 hours of education uh, and about the same amount of time in um, clinical time to be able to get licensed. It's, it's a two-year program, um, several, several thousand dollars uh, not including the, the cost to put the student through it. Um, and then the EMT, uh, which is known as the basic, um, that's, that's simply a 100-hour course. So what is our solution going forward? Uh, we believe the best way to do this going forward is to enter into a one-year contract with Stewart's Ambulance Service. We've had conversations uh, with the, the principal of that uh, firm. They are willing to do that. Um, but it's going to cost us some money. Um, this will give the fire rescue department the opportunity to hold public information sessions prior to the 24, 2024 town meeting. Um, and when we move into that 2024 town meeting, uh, we're going to have to be preparing for the 2025 takeover of fire-based EMS if that is the decision that the Board of Selectmen and the town decide to go. Um, so, as noted, uh, suggested that we create three warrant articles for consideration in 2024. Um, ask the voters to consider fire-based ambulance services beginning January 1st, 2025. Um, the big takeaway on that is the staffing is, is pricey. Um, discussions about a lease purchase of a new ambulance uh, in your packet. The chief has provided you a CIP program outlining the replacement of ambulances. Um, additionally, to establish an ambulance revolving fund to try and pay for some of these um, ambulances and, and capital expenses associated with the business as it goes forward. Um, you know, the replacement of a, a cardiac monitor is $50,000. That's a, that's a big ticket item. Uh, replacement of a stretcher is thirty dollars to $40,000. All these items are, are extremely expensive and they need, the, need to have access to uh, the funds to be able to replace them in the event of failures. Um, should these articles fail, um, I, I think the best option that we have is to, after that, those warrant articles fail, go to the, uh, re reissue the RFP for ambulance services to take on uh, ambulance operations for the town of Wolfboro effective January 1, 2025. Um, how else can we address the problem? Uh, at that point, January 1, 2025, the public safety building will have reached a point where ambulance services can be operated from that location uh, without a whole lot of a lift there. Um, we're hopeful on September 6, 2023, to hold a public uh, hearing uh, for the Board of Selectmen to garner input regarding the existing capital reserve funds to determine whether or not we can secure a used ambulance. I've had conversations with you. Uh, the chief has found a used outfitted ambulance in uh, good condition. Um, we, we've got to put some more hands on it, but we believe that it, it's a good uh, starting 
base for us moving forward. Um, additionally, work to secure a one-year contract with Stewart's Ambulance to get us through December 31, 2024. Um, that will allow us, effective January 1, 2025, to start the business. Um, time for staffing to become confident and comfortable caring for and transporting patients during transport. Uh, time for staff to secure additional training if they so desire. Uh, spread startup costs over uh, additional fiscal years as opposed to just two. Uh, reduces the chance of impact uh, due to negotiations because the current employment contract expires December 31, 2024. So contracted service. Um, today we spent about $276,000. Um, the equivalent level based on the RFPs we received in 2024 will be $900,000. Then it'll go to 927, 954, and then in 2027, it'll be 983,000 based on the low bid. So the staffing levels, um, I put together a, a concept for you uh, a few weeks back that contemplates the very lowest level of staffing required to operate this service. Um, to the, that very low level um, states that if, if we were to do this compared to the $900,000 contract um, in 2024, it would, be, it, it would be a savings to the town of uh, $218,000. When we get into 2025, it would be a savings of um, 541,000, and this is compared to the contracted service. Uh, 2026, savings is 623,000, and then 2027, savings is 671,000 compared to a contracted service. Again, this is the, the very bare minimum of staffing to do this. Um, and I, I don't know I, if that bare minimum is the solution. Loop. So, this is with one ambulance, right? Is, this would be with I'm two sorry. ambulances. Two ambulances. But one is minimum staffing of four per shift. Today. Not what we have today. Not what we have today. Okay. Then you, we had the meeting, and you had asked, what is it going to cost us for the equivalent of what we have today for the town of Wolfboro to operate this. The chief and the deputy went through the spreadsheets that I had developed and updated it. This is what it looks like. So in, to, to run this business, changing the operating model to 42-hour um, work week from 48, um, it's gonna cost the town an additional $213,000 in 2024 um, compared to a contracted service. Again, this is staffing of level of five, which the chief and deputy believe will give you the equivalent of what you have for operations today. Uh, and then it, from that point out, it, it's fairly um, equivalent to a contracted service. So this level brings it very close uh, financially, and again, it does not contemplate the revenue end of the house. That's what I was just going to ask. That doesn't include the revenues that we could receive. So again, this, this tonight we're just talking about expenses. When we come back to you at the next meeting, we're going to have a similar breakdown that shows what our anticipated revenues may be going forward. Please be very cautious with the anticipated revenues because we know that um, there are a lot of revenues that that never materialize in this kind of situation. I, I think that we can do that. I did provide you some documentation from similar communities as to the revenue yeah. um, that they're they're achieving, and if we can fall in line with those similar communities on revenues. Um, it would put us in a pretty good position, but we're not prepared to talk about that tonight. Yeah, and that's what's hard here, because we really, I really need to see the budget, the revenue, and the expenses, because in there you can do unacclaimed claims that can't 
uh, be yeah. met. So we. That's why I've, I've reached out to some some towns to find some information of like so that. We really that'll really give us the picture to hang our hat on. Correct. This, you know, this gives us a good general overview. Yeah. So this this, this again is exclusively looking at the high end expense, mm -hmm. and this gives us the bare minimum expenses. And the next meeting on September the 6th, we will have those revenues, and then that'll all tie together for that October meeting in the full mass uh, business plan. Can you explain to me the five hour, five shift, 42 hour week, what that actually means? That, that's up to the chief and captain. They're here to talk, or chief and deputy. They can talk to the operational end of the house. <clears throat> sure, Chief Zotti. Um, essentially, as, as I know you're aware, we work a uh, three shift rotation today, and you've all heard us, particularly around budget time, refer to Kelly days and things that don't always make a lot of sense to the average person. Um, what we would propose as part of this is to change to a 42 hour work week, um, which would eliminate the Kelly day situation. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna be entirely accurate when I say this, but it, it kind of helps explain. The Kelly Day essentially is a way to make our work schedule fit the town's pay period if we reduce it to its absolutely most simple. Um, by, re by reducing the work week to the 42-hour work week, um, it's a much easier fit. Um, it eliminates that scheduled day off. So what we would propose to you is um, to eliminate the three-group rotation, go to a four-group rotation, of five personnel, um, and we would then backfill so there would be five on duty all the time. Somebody needed to take a crew leave, send them to training, whatever it happened to be, we would maintain a staffing of five people, plus the deputy and myself, and, and so forth. Um, that is essentially the industry standard now in the fire service, is most places go to a 42-hour week. There are multiple ways of doing that um, in terms of actual what days you work and so forth. I think we're open to suggestions. In the end, 42 hours is 42 hours. Um, and we, all, we end up in the same place. If the deputy has anything he'd like to add. Nope, nope. that's good. Um, so again, at that point, the whole discussion of backfilling Kelly days and stuff is done and we don't have to worry about that anymore. So just to simplify it, because when it gets to the, the couple pages further, you know, we talk about a minimum staffing level of five. Mm -hmm. So there's a motor vehicle accident, okay? Multiple motor vehicles, two ambulances go out in a fire truck, hypothetically. Uh, how would, it, in today, today, if there's a motor vehicle accident, stewards dispatches two ambulances, two staffed ambulances, and the, the fire fire service goes as well anyways. So there's going to be enough coverage if we have a multiple at, a, at the station to cover two ambulances going out. What we end up with with this model is five cross-trained personnel okay. on the first tone. If you compare that to today, um, some days it, it's three. Uh, we are still and occasionally running with two. Um, and I'm eliminating ourselves from the equation for the moment, um, plus the ambulance staff, which could be up to four um, with two ambulances. Mm -hmm. I would make the case that five cross-trained people are functionally the equivalent of that because those people can perform any tasks. And it also, don't forget, we can account for our off-duty members, our call members who are available and can respond to a significant incident. Um, one of our, in, uh, one of the intentions with, with this proposal, whichever form it takes, is to develop um, and improve our model of, for lack of a better term, standby coverage. Uh, working with the full-time staff and the union and so forth, but also with our call staff to more specifically define uh, availability in the overnight hours, for example. Uh, may take the form of perhaps a, a stipend to be available for a week at a time between, say, the hours of 5 p.m. and 7 a.m. on an all-companies tone or a first-alarm tone. We know these people are responding. 
period. Now it's more of a, if I'm available, if they need us, this, this kind of thing. We would have to work toward um, a much more defined model. The, the other thing I would add about these expenses, um, the way they've been calculated, it calculates out uh, wage adjustments over the life of the, through 2027 at 3.5% a year. Uh, and it also contemplates health insurance with a 5% increase over the years, uh, starting out with uh, family plans for everybody. Right. Uh, okay. So we, that, we that, went to the top end. We went if you worst will, case scenario. To be, try to be as transparent okay. as possible. That's good to know. Conservative is good. The, the backup material that we provided also includes um, anticipated costs for protective clothing for new hires on top of our normal budget for that sort of thing. Um, we've anticipated uniforms, we've anticipated physicals, we've anticipated um, increased fuel costs for more vehicles, um, vehicle maintenance. Um, I can't stand here and tell you that those, those four years that we've projected out are our complete budget for the next four years, but in, in the most relevant way to this proposal, I think you'll find we've accounted for all the bigger ticket items. I wrote Jim in, and, and I would like to see us have a fire budget and an ambulance budget so that we know that this is all related to the ambulance and that's for the fire. And if you have staff going over, we do that in public works and water and stuff. It makes it clear for us what pertains, in my mind, to the ambulance I, and what is to the fire. I think it, it can certainly take any form that the board feels is appropriate. Yeah. It, I, I don't see any particular problem with that. As one, it would work best for me. I, I think it would be easier for the voters to be able to look at it yeah. as well. It would save us a lot of paperwork. And um, I just want to make a mention. Um, I found a document online. I shared it with Jim. I'm sure Jim already had it, though. Um, printed on 8-15-2023. Um, and it's a 25-page document from the State of New Hampshire Department of Safety Division, Division of Fire Standards Training and Emergency Medical Services. And it lists every EMS unit in the state. And it's on you, the website. Yeah, and you can look at it and you can see what's what. And you can see that there's a large, large percentage, I'm guessing very close to half, of the towns in New Hampshire that have their own fire-based EMS. So we are not creating something new here. We're not reinventing the wheel. This is something that is done throughout the state. And I, so I think people can feel comfortable. And by the way, our town manager is an expert in this situation. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, the, the, the interesting thing about that document Brian mentions is, number one, it, it does account for 103 municipal-based, fire-based ambulance services, but that does not paint the entire picture. For example, where I came from, Littleton, they just took on this project and they just took on ambulance services but they are contracted with three other communities. That's not identified in that right. plan. So the, the fact of the matter is, there's a lot of communities out there who contract with fire departments for their 911 services. So if you were to do a queue of how many towns receive ambulance services from a fire department, it's going to be significantly higher than the numbers in that Even sheet. Even the 50%. And I'm, if I may, um, Brookfield would be a prime local example of that, a contract with the town of Wakefield. So that shows that we're, we're, in the, we're going in the right direction. And since it came up in the presentation, I would like to make the point that um, we would be changing our EMS license with the state and licensing vehicles and so forth. I've had several conversations with the captain at the Bureau of EMS who handles that. And she assures me that with 24 to 48 hours of warning, that turnaround time would be within a week. It's, that shouldn't be a concern in terms of delay or anything like that. So to move this along, um, and again, to try to stay at that 50,000 foot level, this gives you an idea of what the expenses would look like at the top end of operations um, based on uh, essentially a staffing of 22 by the fiscal year of 2026. 
Oops, probably just broke it. Um, so, Brian, this talks to your, your issue of collections. I did reach out to some communities. This is what we received back from them uh, as to what they've received from uh, revenues from their ambulance operations. Uh, so you can see in, in 2022, 20, uh, the average rev revenues from uh, those four communities is $459,000. Um, that's revenues. That's what they've collected. That's not what they build. So I do have the equation for what they've built. I've just hid that for transparency and to be able to understand it a little bit better. Um, additionally, um, I did put down there that their build versus collected was 43%. Um, furthermore, uh, the state does allow for the town to create a revolving fund that would give us the flexibility to put some of the revenues into an account so that if that stretcher breaks, that cardiac monitor breaks, we have a catastrophic ambulance failure, we may have the money in that account to be able to leverage those without a, a huge hit um, on the operating budgets. Um, so with the staffing level of 22, um, it would be a 42-hour work week rather than a 48. That's, that's pretty much the industry standard today. It provides a better quality of life for staff. It also gives the department a greater depth of staffing. Minimum manning of uh, five, which would indicate two on an engine, two on an ambulance, and one flow between the engine and ambulance 15. as a sign, and these guys would be there as well. Um, Closely represents ser services delivered today. This is as close as we can get um, without adding another layer of four people. Uh, significant increases in wages and benefits. Uh, that's the driving force behind this entire project. Staffing levels of 15. It's a 48-hour work week, similar to current operations. Uh, it creates a scheduling nightmare. Uh, minimum staffing level of four, two on an engine, two on an ambulance. This is similar to what a number of those communities um, that you see up on the board operate under. Uh, it is the most cost effective. Uh, it does give the chief the opportunity, if, if he can secure grant funding, to grow additional staffing over the upcoming years uh, to reduce the startup cost to ta taxpayers. Um, the solution is likely somewhere in between these two options. I don't think it's the low end. I think ultimately the high end is where we need to be. But as a startup, I think that's going to be a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. Um, so going forward, what, what we'd like to be able to do is consider three warrant articles in the coming year. Um, and this will be flushed out a little more in the business plan. Uh, input that the, the department receives from the public input sessions. Um, and conversations with the voters. So Article 1 would be, uh, are you in favor of hiring a certain number of people effective December 2024 for the purposes of operating 911 ambulance service effective January 2025? Uh, basically puts together um, draft language so that we have a starting point. Um, Article 2, to see if the town will authorize Board of Selectmen to enter into a long-term lease agreement uh, for uh, a new ambulance payable over the next number of years. Um, again, this could be paid for through that revenue account. And Article 3 would be to create that uh, revolving fund as outlined in the previous slide. Um, these are all obviously just baseline articles. They haven't been sent through legal. They're just getting some language together to talk about how we're going to handle some of these expenses if the board so desires. Uh, so what are our next steps moving forward? On September 6th, we'd like to hold a public hearing for you as the board to receive input from citizens regarding the use of the existing capital reserve funds to purchase a used ambulance. We would like to be able to have that conversation. On September 6th, we will have some backup information um, from legal on that, and the chief will have additional information. Uh, you have some of that with you tonight in the CIP that he built out. Uh, and we also plan on that evening uh, having a similar presentation to this, but that presentation will discuss 
the revenue side of this project. Um, currently, we'd like to be able to work with Stewart's Ambulance to secure a one-year contract, uh, which is authorized under our existing contract. Uh, Fire Chief to begin holding public input sessions and continue to develop the 911 Ambulance uh, Service Business Plan for the 2024 budget pro process, and we'd like to be able to deliver that to the Board of Selectmen at the October 4th, 2023 meeting. Uh, again, this is a, a 50,000 foot overview of the expenses side of this uh, endeavor. Um, I can try to um, get answers to questions that you may have. I'm sure I won't be able to answer them now, um, as will the, the chief and the deputy. So we're here to try to entertain your questions. Jim, can we ask stewards how much they've billed over the last five years and how much they received? And maybe they'll give it to us. I can ask that question. Can I interject on that? I had that conversation today. Um, I need to talk to the manager about it. He, they are willing to do that. However, it's proprietary, and I don't know how we would handle it under 91A. He's more than willing to share it with you folks. But it, it, we, I, I don't want to see it until we know whether it's public or not. And I, it's not a decision I can actually make. And I will stand behind what the chief has said, because that's what was said to me by the chair of Stewart's. Yeah, and I hope that if they could see it, they could look at setting their budget up or let Stuart see the budget and say, are we missing anything, which would seem to me the other way to get the same information. In terms of the revenue, um, I think that that may be a little harder to get. Um, but I think that revolving account, we don't have to take all the revenue received and put in it. We could say, OK, it's going to go in. 95% of it is going to go to offset the running and 5% retain for capital items. Am yeah, I correct? Uh, absolutely. And I, I think the, one of the ways to handle that is to have, uh, you know, Mr. Burr always asked about this with the capital reserve funds. What should we top that account out at? So if, if we're having uh, good years with equipment, you know, and if it's, let's say, we know an ambulance is $500,000 to replace, and we have $550,000 in that account, we're good. We don't need any more. Let's, let's shift that back to the taxpayer um, or, or whatever direction the board wants. But that, that is a variable that is up to your discretion. So I think we also, I mean, it's kind of, to me, is whatever is most transparent to the taxpayer. So if we do a percentage, it may not be as transparent to them that this is the ambulance service, this is the amount we have revenue towards it, and then we need capital, and that that also they have to do through warrant articles. When you shift it, you know, for, once you do the initial warrant article, if you shift it just annually, I think they start to lose the amount of money that could have gone to the operation of the ambulance into the capital. It, I, it's the same amount of money one way. I'm just looking at it, what is the most transparent and easiest for the taxpayer to see. Yeah, I, I can tell you in, in conversations with the chief from Tilton, they put 100% into their uh, revolving fund, but their revolving fund is used for the purchase of all of their equipment. So every piece of fire apparatus they've ever bought, every ambulance they've ever bought, every piece of equipment for their ambulances they ever bought, it was from their ambulance revenue fund. It was not from the taxpayer or any other capital reserve fund. So we can actually reach out to a number of different communities and get what they do and be able to provide that to you so that you guys have a, an idea of how you want to handle that. Right. Well, the equipment may not come, but they will be paying for the staff yep. and not getting the revenue. So it comes yep. to me is the same way. You can put all your money there and not ask for it, but you're going to pay more each year because you can't cover 
with revenue your expense of the service. So I'm just looking to say which is the easiest for everybody to understand and see exactly what they're paying for. That's what, what my question is about. And, okay. and we might not be able to get the exact numbers from Stuart, but they might be able to give us just a percentage. How does our percentage stack up against other towns? They could just say, we, we receive of billable amounts, we receive 45%, 50%, something like that. I suspect that kind of global figure is fairly readily available. Yeah. Um, I will say this, our demographics in Wolfboro are pretty good as far as insurance coverage and so forth compared to many places. Correct. So that would give um, us a good idea because we're seeing 43.8% from other communities average and stewards might not be able to give us the numbers of what they get for revenues and how much they collect. Uh, from it, but they might be able to say, oh, our collection rate is 62%. Right. And then that would give us an idea of where we fall. And if I may, that those numbers do not reflect differences in um, the way those towns have set up their collections and so forth. And that would be a decision you folks would make as right. to how aggressively you wish to pursue um, different types of billing and so forth. Okay. Um, and how to, at what point do you write it off? Um, that is a decision that the board would make. Um, we would anticipate putting a variety of options in front of you for consideration. Um, and if I may, the uh, in your backup material and what we'll be discussing tomorrow morning with the CIP committee um, is essentially what Mrs. Murray talked about, I, I, I more or less split the difference. Obviously, that'll change based on whatever policy you decide to enact, but it anticipates putting a portion, um, roughly 50% of the revenue towards capital items and the rest essentially general fund. But that, obviously, that percentage is whatever you decide it is. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Any so further? If, is the board okay if I continue to pursue a contract with Stewart's for 2024 so that we can advise the um, I'll make bidders? A I'll make a motion that you pursue a one-year contract with Stewart's Ambulance Second. starting in January 2024. Motion by Linda, seconded by Luke. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next is a, dis is a discussion about our sidewalk right of ways. So um, I just wanted to know um, if we plan on looking at other towns, and the pri primarily the one I'm looking at is Concord, and sitting down sometime and figuring out what kind of sidewalk ordinance we're gonna have. Um, I was talking to someone else today, again, that um, said that it was impossible during our latest event to get a wheelchair down some sidewalks in town and thought that the minimum 36 inch for ADA was not appropriate it wasn't working for for at least that night and for um, other times um, I had to I did help get three people into the event this weekend that were handicapped that called me specifically so that I could help them maneuver our sidewalks in some of our areas so I'm just wondering when we look when we will be looking at and addressing some kind of sidewalk ordinance I have, I did have been walking around town because I take the trolley and we're going to need to, to, to talk about what's on the sidewalk. One is your A-frames that are in the walkway. Uh, this is the one where somebody pulls out a table and then there's a chair and then you got a dog. And we are going to need to get bike racks because I'm starting to see bikes. We're asking people to come in town. Brian, this is yours. Two people walking next to each other, they have a hard time uh, making it. And so I, I, as I go around, I take pictures so we can kind of look at our sidewalk, some of the places when I'm down there 
um, that we're having issues. But I, I'm with Brian. I think we need to know where our boundaries are, have a discussion about, you know, what we do if the sidewalk is partly private and partly public, and then how do we get enough width? Because you can say, and, and we know this is coming because of COVID. People want to be outside. This was not, we didn't deal with this three years ago. This is a new phenomenon with wanting more of it. So we want to accommodate sitting outside, but we don't want to make walking on our sidewalks so difficult that people eventually say, I'm not, I'm not walking down to that store. I'm not going to deal with that in the sidewalk. So I think we have a... Uh, an interesting balancing act to, yeah. as we do the, the, these ordinances. And, and I, other selectmen, if you go around and you clip a picture of it, then we have something to look at when yeah. we go to um, talk about it and, and, and get some input. I said to the EDC, I'd like them to have some discussion. It'd be good for the chamber to have some discussion. I think this is something we as a community need to agree on what we need and what's best for the pedestrians and the business community. Yeah, walking communities are becoming, I just went to Salem, Mass this um, past weekend for a, a wedding, and what a different Salem, Mass is now compared to how it was 25 years ago when I was a kid. Um, it, it has become a walking community, and they've done that in Newburyport, and they've done it in Rockport, and they've done it in a lot of main seaside communities. So we are going to become a more of a walking community and we're going to have more people that want outdoor spaces so we have to just figure how we can blend it make it work for mm -hmm. everyone yep and i agree too i think one of the you know definitely agree with one of the points you made too is going to be knowing where our boundaries are on these sidewalks right. uh, we've been finding out recently that you know some of these commercial properties own out into the sidewalk a little bit mm -hmm. Not only just to know what they can do in theirs or what we can do in ours, but also when it comes time to do repair work on them, we need to yep. know yep. the limits of what we're going to pay for and if they want to mm. pay their portion so it all match, you know, matches. It's, it's You're important right. to, yep. important to know what uh, who has what. So, anybody else? Okay. So I, I just, uh, yep. I mean, I, I need to know: Are, are we going to? establish a committee to begin investigating this? Is this going to be something that's assigned out? Because uh, bringing it up is, is wonderful, but if you want movement, Brian, we got to figure out a way to I mean, I think it. that if I would be on a committee. I think Jason I, should be on a committee, our code enforcement officer. And um, I, some, some towns use code enforcement officers to enforce sidewalk and things like this. Some actually in Concord, I think they use their health inspector is the person who's in charge of making sure that and you know who it is in our ordinance yeah the director of public works yeah i know it's good we we got into that with yeah. i would be more than willing to be on the committee but i would like the chamber i'd like represent in from the edc i'd like representation from the planning board so we get a good mix yeah. of people in the community um and that we just kind of take a look at it and bring something back and we'll need to get, see if we can get to the registry and deeds and see what surveys are there. Our tax map doesn't do it for us. Um, and, and just out of curiosity, I mean, I, I think this is a good start. If we, if we had a board, two board members, chamber, EDC, planning board, do you want a uh, citizen component of it? Yeah, absolutely. Two? Put it out, see what we get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. absolutely. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll work tomorrow or sometime in the next week to get a um, committee stand up for sidewalks. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Now discussion about leasing of town properties. So I, um, I did ask, and I don't know if Jim has had time, but I'd like to um, find out, and if we have to go to town council or not, um, how much and what kind of leasing is customary and can we do as a select board? We've leased a couple of spots on Kate Park 
for the use of propane tanks, storage of propane tanks, and when, do, when does it become enough? When, if somebody else wants to lease a section next to another building and then someone decides they want to lease a, a portion for So we, we, I think we need to find out, um, because I know that the state RSA says that you're not supposed to lease property that already has a public use, especially if it becomes a detriment to public use. So it's something that I think that we need to look at going forward when we start leasing um, the, for the bike trails in Abernathy, um, which already had a public use and we gave it another public use, but then we had a lease agreement with it uh, or a license agreement, which are universal. Um, so it's just something I think we have to look at. Then we're, you know, are we going to be leasing pieces of sidewalk to people so they can put tables? Are we going to be leasing other areas? So it's something that I just think that we need to find out um, what, what our end game is. How much are we going to keep doing this? It, I mean, when you say yes to two, how do you say no to the next two? So I just think it's something that we need to, to look at. And I don't know um, if we can get um, more information from town council to see what is appropriate, what is not appropriate, and if we can decide, you know, where's the line? So the, it, the, the proper, proper mechanism is a license agreement, um, which is what we've been doing uh, with the most recent documents. Um, and I think what it really boils down to is a policy decision by the board as to what you're going to do. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess when I look back at some of the things we've done, we took one side of one dock at the railroad station, $500 gives us rent, it started a young business, Kate Park, those tanks, we get $2,000 a year. It was on the edge of the park. So it isn't like we took the park and took a big hunk out of it, and, that, and I would agree with you that in that. We, we use the water tank up on North Main Street. I think we get about uh, over $35,000 a year running space um, up on that. Uh, we rent our uh, restaurant, the Dockside. We rent the railroad station. Some of the land that we use, we do get revenue back for the town. So that's what we're balancing um, in that. So, you know, I think each case is on its own. Um, and I think we, we talk about it. I have no problem trying to get an attorney's, you know, opinion on how much, but I think it really becomes the, what board yeah. is there at the time and what we feel is the sentiment of the community. And, and then the, the last one we've licensed is the biggest one. We've licensed the, the building and the use of um, bike trails on a whole very large public-owned or town-owned property. After we put out to the voters a Warren article who granted us approval Correct. to accept the trails, that's very different, I see, yeah. than the board of selectmen saying, that's yeah. ours. Okay, we're just going to... But and there, is no, and there is no revenues for that. No, they, we, we sent that out to the voters. Yeah. That, they're the ones who decided on that. Um, and I think it because that is multiple user, users. Any other questions, comments? Sort of proceed. We're going to kind of look for an opinion from legal. Is that kind of what I'm taking away? Yep. All right. Next discussion, Warren Article recommendation for the Police Commission. Yeah, um, I, I ended up finding out just by, I was researching something else, that um, the Police Commission doesn't have the authority granted in state RSA to recommend um, Warren Articles on our um, town meeting. So um, an example that's, that kind of hit me a little strange, and I'm, I'm not going to say that I don't believe we needed an SRO officer. It's always good to have safety and safety in the schools. But that particular um, Warren article 
had two kind of issues with it. One, um, me being a, a representative on the budget committee, the budget committee had told me that I had no vote. That was, again, a mistake with state RSA. I did have a, uh, an option to vote, and I was told for two years I couldn't vote. Um, so the vote came up at the budget committee, and it passed by one. I could have been the vote that made it fail, or I could have made it pass by two, but that was taken away. Then the Board of Selectmen, we abstained from it because we were a little concerned about the information that was brought to us in the 11th hour. Then it was recommended by the police commission. So if you take the police commission's recommendation away and I vote no on the SRO officer so it fails with the budget committee, you have a much different picture that's put in front of the voters. Well, it doesn't fail, Brian. It, it's, a, it's a vote to not recommend. Only yes. the voters can decide Correct. that. So what ends up, what, what I'm looking at going forward is to make sure that we now know that um, and we're going to have to check to see if, we, if we've had other things slip through the cracks. Budget, a, a member from the select board on the budget committee does have voting rights, and um, the police commission does not have the, the, um, the, the right to recommend a warrant article um, that goes to town meeting. I think you, know, you brought that up at the police commission meeting. I think Steve was more than Correct. They, they, were, they were very, very, very uh, amicable about yeah. it. Linda? Yeah, this, this goes um, back to how we found out Brian did do the research. Thank you. You know, we send our warrant articles to DRA and to town attorney that had never been pointed out to us. We always can learn and grow, which is exactly what we did. But uh, Chairman John McDonald of the Budget Committee got the New Hampshire Municipal Association to come to the town of Wolfboro, did something for the department heads, and did something, and did a presentation for the Budget Committee. And we got a written um, uh, response to asking that question, and it's RSA 32 colon 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, I mean, 4, 3, 6, and it goes through. It is not just the police commission. It's the library, anything else. It can only be the board of selectmen and the budget committee, and we have an opinion on that. So we've, we've the learned. The planning board, too. For zoning amendments, the planning the, board can recommend. This was this is special warrant articles. This was based on a budget. Okay. Yep. yep. And so we have that opinion. Um, there was absolutely a wonderful course course with a lot of information for us. And we, as all boards, can grow and learn. And this is one that we did just like we can no longer bold or underline any words in a warrant article that <laughs> we found out after doing it for a while. Yeah. Why they don't catch them the first time through beats me, but well, according I'm to, glad to know this, and yeah. we will not make that error again. Ac according to the, um, to the New Hampshire municipal representatives that had the course for us, it's because there are only three employees that look at every single um, warrant article in the state. So, I, I, Brian, you could say that, but we send it to town attorney, and we send it to mm -hmm. them, and you... That's how we get, we only make good decisions based on the information we're provided, and that was a piece of information we weren't provided. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments? All right, moving on. RIB Sprayfields and Recreation Property Discussion. So we <laughs> had a, uh, a quick site visit, um, which we really didn't walk the site. We, we had a good conversation um, with the Single Track Association, um, the Cross Country Ski Association staff, board members, and the uh, representatives um, from Woodard and Curran, our contract operators. Um, we have some uh, signage which we would like to um, begin to uh, have the board consider for installation. Uh, in those areas. Um, I, I think we still have some work to do on some of those uh, signages, um, you know, some of those ones uh, that identify when people are getting close. 
to those spray fields. Um, but the, the, the trail closed one, uh, you got some correspondence uh, from a couple board members. I've sent it back to uh, Woodard and Curran for uh, them to adjust that. So we'll get a, that back to you guys for consideration. Um, the other thing that I want you to be aware of is I did have a conversation with a trail builder. Um, he's gonna do everything in his power to stay at least 100 feet outside of the spray fields. He has those maps um, and he'll, he'll lay that out when he uh, comes on site to do the work. So his intention is not to go within 100 feet of that buffer. Um, again, the, the current buffer is identified as 75 feet, um, but there's question whether or not it should be 100 feet or not. Um, the state has it identified as 100 feet, but that's for uh, affluent disposal on fields and open areas. Uh, forested is a little bit different, uh, which this is area where we're talking is forested. That's why the 75 foot rule uh, came into play. It's not a rule, um, but there's some question whether or not it should be. So the good news is the trail builder plans on staying outside that 100 foot buffer. Um, and Dave Didion has the updated uh, information that I received from board members regarding the signage and I hope to get that back to you uh, early next week so that we can get moving on that. And another thing we're gonna have to look at is there are a lot of trails that exist that have been there for a long time that we as a board didn't approve and their entrances and exits um, are on either access roads or um, that became cross country ski roads and those trails are well within 75 or 100 feet of the spray fields. So if you have to go down a trail that is too close to get into the entrance to a trail that that entrance is too close, they're gonna have to potentially reroute some of those old trails or shut them down, just sections of them or, or something to that effect. Well, we're gonna shut down at, with our signage those cross country ski, ski trails that go through our spray fields and so clearly mark them. So we're gonna take care of that mostly yep. through our marking and signage. We just make, need to make sure we get them all. Yep. All right, any other, any other comments? Move on to other business. Linda. Yeah, I just wanna remind the public that on Thursday, August 24th, New Hampshire DOT is going to hold another public hearing on Route 28 South, the um, road upgrade, sidewalks, drainage in that area. It will start at 5.30, doors will open, a presentation will take place at, six, at 6.30, and we're looking for a good public turnout. Thank you. Any other business? Luke. I just wanted to say to Brian uh, and the EDC and all the people involved in last week's uh, festivity that that was a, uh, a wonderful job. And I've never, I, in my lifetime, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen that many people that down docks, even on 4th of July. Uh, you hit it out of the park, so you did a really good job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good I job, agree. Brian. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, was and, on, um, I was out on the bay watching them, and it was just amazing to see them coming out. You turn around to the islands and stuff, you could actually see the lights bouncing off the islands and the trees out there and stuff. It was. You were on a boat in the water? Yeah. yeah. I, heard, I heard that's a great place to, to view it. I got some videos I could show you. So it's, uh, it's what I understand. It's diff completely different there than it is on land, yep. the viewing of it. So. Um, Any, go ahead, Brian. So under other business, um, I, I have um, reached out to the Lakes Region Planning Commission. Um, and with all the projects that we're having that are happening right now, um, I'm thinking that we might wanna reach out to have a circuit planner um, assist um, our town planner for one day a week, potentially, to, um, help him so that he focuses on um, the most restrictive practices going forward as our master plan states as a, a, as a requirement. And um, I think that um, 
right now we have a lot of things happening at, at the same time, and I think him having a, a, some assistance would be um, beneficial. I, I guess I would just like clarification. What town projects are you speaking to, Brian? Well, just just um, any any of the um, proposed developments that have come up. We've had 180 units that went before planning and, and zoning and ZBA. We've had a lot of um, development projects that have come up, and we. So you're, had, you're not specifically talking. Yeah. Town-based projects. You're Correct. Talking private Correct. projects. Yeah. Projects in Understood. the town. Understood. Yeah, and um, and we and we've had um, all the zoning amendments that were proposed at the last town meeting that um, he could have used some assistance with. So I, I just think that it would be good if we got um, someone in to um, take a little bit of uh, weight off of him and maybe also help be a liaison with the town manager. So that it, it gives everybody a, a, a little bit of of an extra boost. Takes a little bit off of you. Takes a little bit off of him. Yeah, we'd also have to see where that would fit into a budget too and stuff. To yeah. Well, we were looking for a assistant town manager for ninety thousand dollars, and we were looking for a town engineer for ninety thousand dollars, and both of those fell flat. We haven't found anybody. So I'm thinking that if we had somebody that assisted our town planner and was a liaison with our town manager, that might help everybody a little bit, um, take a little bit off of our planner and take a little bit off of our town manager's shoulders. And it would be a third of the price of what we were looking for for an engineer or an assistant town manager. I guess I really feel that there is a real need for a town engineer, no matter how we do it or we take the money to hire engineers to come through. I think in the long run it is the second set of eyes and I think we get better projects. You know, I, I don't have any way of evaluating whether it makes any sense to bring a, a circuit uh, planner in here a couple of days a week. This is something we should really see laid out. I just have no way of, of knowing whether that is the best way to get some support for Jim. And um, so I, I just don't know at this point. We'd have to have more information. Yep. OK, any other, other business? Committee reports. Let's start with Dave. Yeah, I had a conservation, conservation commission meeting on Monday. Uh, that's a pretty active group. I don't know if you noticed that down going into Pleasant Valley, they were pulling uh, invasive species today yeah. and the day before. They just noticed that it came up and was pointed out by somebody in the valley. Uh, but they are very active in, in all of their uh, land, especially Whiteface with the parking lot now complete. Um, and a little bit of trail work up there. So yeah, they're, they're very active. As you can see tonight, they, they're very good at locating funds as well. So. That's all I have. Okay. So last night we had a planning board meeting. Uh, this morning we had a community, Wolf Road Community TV uh, board meeting. And Monday we also had a Wolf Road Waters meeting that I attended this, this week, so in a busy week. Linda? Yeah, um, I had the Wolfboro Waters uh, Committee meeting and we had a presentation on the drainage for the public safety building, which was very informative. We had Rick Vanderpool who presented a proposal to do some woody stream work on some of the streams in town um, and look at maybe for 2025. So we'll look further into that. We talked about uh, the damage done to Russ Pond um, from the July storm and the fact that there were two beaver dams that um, were breached and fell apart and a huge amount of sediment went into Russ Pond. So we're looking at the 319 grant to see if there's some way to uh, amend it to get some monies to address what happened in that grant was to put a pipe through the beaver dam so they didn't 
fall apart or breach, and it was a little late to do that now, um, even though they say the beavers are coming back. Um, I toured the spray fields with Brian. We went up and watched the, uh, the, uh, how it worked. And, uh, and it didn't smell very good. No, I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> um, it, it actually smelled terrible. It was, it, I thought that <laughs> it being more treated, you know, yeah. that it, it wouldn't be that bad. I thought like a musty smell or yeah. something like that, yeah. but it, did, it smelled terrible. Yeah. So. I wouldn't ride my bike <laughs> through it. Um, the chamber board meeting I went to, I had two friends of Pop, uh, friends of Pop Whalen. I had a library trustees meeting and I met with the uh, Wolfboro Waters Subcommittee on assessing and we talked about the testing um, that we were doing this year and how that's turned out. Um, testing that we still want to do and are looking at um, what we will need for next year. Um, there is um, a concern about the types of cyanobacteria in the water, and that's part of what they're trying to identify. So that's all I have. We had a budget committee meeting, too. Yeah. Oh. I had a, uh, I went to the chamber meeting as well. Uh, I had a Heritage Commission meeting, and I also had, uh, last Thursday night, I had uh, Friends of the Libby. So I had a, um, Linda and I had a budget committee meeting that was just the, kind of the kickoff um, for the year. And um, I had the uh, an EDC meeting, um, which was a, a kind of a wrap up of the event at the docks that was yesterday. The, my BOS meeting today. And um, tomorrow we start CIP, nine o'clock in the morning. Town manager's report. Uh, so I had a, Brian and I attended a meeting at PSI Plastics regarding the uh, discussion the board had a couple weeks ago about supporting their expansion. To give you a little bit more background information about what's going on there, they need to install, or they would like to install a new press to the, the Wickers side drive of the building. It's a large 200 and uh, 10 pound press I think it is similar to one they have now in order to operate that press um, They need to have additional power run what they're looking at right now is to do essentially in a, a directional bore under the building to uh, Secure power to the wickers side wickers place. drive side of the building um, Go into a transformer at which point it would um, operate those two large presses. Um, I met with uh, Benoit LaMontagne um, earlier this week from the State uh, Department of Economic Development uh, and discussed the project with him. A uh, couple of things that we need to be aware of, and I, I have reached out to PSI. Um, this grant uh, essentially will have to go through the town going forward. Um, because the grant is issued to either a nonprofit or um, a municipality. Where the electrical system is owned by the town, um, that directional bore all the way to the transformer would have to be a town asset to be able to receive this grant. Uh, the grant is currently estimated, or the project is currently estimated at $750,000. Um, so this will take place in, coming in the February time frame. I'm hopeful that PSI will um, support a grant writer to be able to do this project. Um, and then it's a matter of uh, figuring it out uh, who manages the funds going forward if awarded the grant. Um, so it was a productive meeting. Uh, it was a productive meeting. Uh, with Benoit, it was actually quite interesting. We have a lot of uh, similar acquaintances and mentors, so it was actually turned into a very good conversation. Um, the the last storm um, right now, we're estimating that the cost of that last storm is approximately three hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. Steve, Casey, and I met. Um, we've been able to identify one hundred and thirty thousand dollars within our operating budgets to help uh, stand up some of these costs. Um, the good news on this is 
Part of that $350,000 is the staff labor for when they were actually working their regular hours. The reason he's documented that is he can put in for uh, reimbursement through the declaration um, under a, a different mechanism than what we've traditionally used from uh, Homeland Security. So he's actively working on that. Um, but w he feels comfortable with finding this $130,000 providing no other storms, and we're able to get through November, December without too much trouble. Uh, he feels comfortable with where we're at. Uh, I also met with uh, the Russ Pond group with Steve Randall uh, and Tavis. Uh, next step from this point is to meet with Tavis, myself, the representatives from Russ Pond and uh, CEI. Um, to move that to the next steps and probably come in and talk to the board about that alteration to the grant that you were talking about previously, Linda. Uh, public safety building project is start to start next week right now. That's what the plan is. Uh, so you'll probably be seeing a trailer, work trailer move in there. Um, and we're actively moving forward with that. Um, I had a meeting as well with the engineer and the two representatives from the energy committee. Uh, we went through the plans uh, pretty in depth based on uh, some feedback that the Energy Committee received from somebody who they had reviewed the plans. A um, couple items we're looking at, but right now the building um, looks uh, very efficient going forward. So there's some positive news there. Uh, library um, generator will be coming in this fall. That's been assigned out to Barry. Barry and I met uh, with. Barry Muccio from MED and met with uh, Allison, the new director. Um, we're going to have to look at probably additional uh, funds to, to get this thing tied in and operational, but more to follow on that. Uh, other than that, working on CIPs and budgets and CIP kicks off tomorrow. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Questions from the press? Um, well, I want to say I appreciated the opportunity this week to um, visit the wastewater treatment plant and take a ride with um, David Deddy and, um, and Linda and go up and see the spray fields in action. Um, it, it's, it's quite impressive. Um, I've seen the water retention pond, but I've never seen the actual spray field, so that was good. Um, I also noticed that there's a cyanobacteria alert issued for Lake Wentworth just as of yesterday. That's it. Okay, thank you. Public input. Robert Lohman. Um, I've got a couple of questions on the uh, upcoming ambulance situation. Uh, I keep hearing the term revolving funds. Are those the same as capital reserve funds or am I off the base? Um, no, they, they are not. It's a different mechanism. We actually have a couple revolving funds in town right now uh, that I believe the police department has one and you see in the warrant articles annually they pull funds to buy the their police cruisers as well. Parks and Rec has one that they do a lot of their um, programs out of to buy shirts and et cetera, so it doesn't hit the taxpayer. Okay, now I understand what those are. All right, the second question is, is there any thought, uh, and I think you ought to think seriously about this, of considering the ambulance services as an enterprise fund? It is a business. We can get legal guidance on that. It, okay. I just think in response to the question about transparency, it would probably a little be a little more effective from a transparency point of view to be a standalone enterprise fund. And that's really why I'm going in that direction. And I, I agree, Jim, we probably do need some legal, but uh, you know, since you're going to be billing and since you're going to be uh, basically running a business, because that's what you're doing, mm -hmm. 
uh, I think it ought to be treated as an enterprise fund. Would you anticipate that paying for itself 100%? Well, we won't because know that until happen. you guys come up with the you, you guys come up with the revenue. It probably is a loser, mm -hmm. more than likely. Mm -hmm. It probably will constantly be a loser. But again, I'm back to the transparency mm -hmm. point of view, mm -hmm. and even the even the fact that you've got an enterprise fund that runs in the red, if you will. Um, I think, from a transparency point of view, it makes a lot more sense. Okay. Knowing full well we're not going to, you know, it's a business. We know it's going to run in the red. Everybody knows it. Fine. But let's get it out in the open so we know how much it is going to run in the red. So one of the mechanisms we're looking at, Bob, and I'll get that opinion, but one of the mechanisms we're looking at is to, to place all of those incremental costs associated with the ambulance, which would be um, staffing, benefits, et cetera, in and ambulance department, similar to what you see today. So if we're hiring eight people, those eight people may be identified in that ambulance budget for transparency moving forward. A um, lot of moving pieces, but I will uh, investigate if an ambulance can be an enterprise fund. Yeah. I, I would agree with those, those, obviously, the separate department, which does give you the you know, the, there it is all by itself in the budget. But I guess, my, I guess my point is too often revolving funds like the police department fund get lost in the shovel from an accounting point of view. It really, that revolving fund isn't out in the open, so people don't know about it. I just think it's an enterprise fund. You've got a P&L, you've got a business plan. Mm -hmm. The fact that it runs in the red, everybody knows it's going to. But again, I go back to that whole transparency issue. Mm -hmm. I just feel very strongly about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hi, Bobby Budman. A um, couple things. I was hoping that you could send the PowerPoint to the budget committee on the ambulance that you presented. That would be wonderful. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask about the ambulance and the numbers is uh, I kept hearing Tilton and numbers for Tilton and looking at other towns. When we look at other towns, I think it's very important to make sure we're paying attention to the median age of those towns and also their median income. So for example, Tilton only has 3,929 um, citizens and their median age is 46.3. That is, I mean, we're talking about thousands and thousands of more people in Wolfboro, and we're talking about a median age over 11 years older than Tilton. So when we're looking at those numbers, if we can get Stort's numbers and actually verify what we have paid for as far as services instead of looking at Tilton's numbers overall. I think we have to look at our population. We really cannot compare ourselves to Tilton and some of those other towns that are running these services for a much younger community and smaller community. Um, the other thing was, back to GI Plastics, I had asked during the budget committee um, meeting if we had checked the environmental impact on GI Plastics before we accept that money and then hand out that money. I don't think Wolfboro really wants to be in the business of adding PFAS into our town, into our community. So if we can figure out the environmental impact of GI Plastics expanding and us being part of this, I think it would really be good for the citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Just to close the loop on the earlier issue, uh, Mr. Shea and I have agreed to have further conversations about the effectiveness and attention given uh, by Marine Patrol and Crescent Lake uh, and Lake Wentworth. Uh, I feel it's fair to, to represent on the gentleman's behalf that the issue remains tabled for the time being. Um, our Marine Patrol officers are capable of figuring out a parking spot and walking a bit if that's what's necessary to give the place the attention it needs. Uh, and I wanted also just to thank you all for your support with the uh, use of the town dock for our AMBAR boat. Uh, it's been 
actually a great PR tool. Uh, I've been down there. I've had some great conversations with people just checking on that vessel, and it, it demonstrates, uh, I think, a really forward-thinking position on behalf of the town to be ready to respond to issues that happen out on the water. And uh, it's been it's been a really a, a really good thing as far as I see it. So thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I forgot my biggest one. Um, I wanted to thank Chief Zadi today. He took the time to um, go on a Zoom call and ask about the specs of potentially putting in a safe haven baby box um, in the new building. So I really appreciate that you took the time um, to consider that, just the specs, just so we can move forward with potentially adding that to our community. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else for public input? Okay. Need a I, motion to go into non public? I do. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Motion by Dave, seconded by Linda. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody.